Alongside the higher-end iPhone 5S, we have the iPhone 5C in a variety of colors. How do they compare? Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocket Now, and in this video we're going to compare the 5S with the 5C. Let's get to it. Okay, so let's talk hardware. I'm going to push the 5S to the side because if you've seen a 5, you've seen a 5S for the most part. The 5C comes in five colors and Apple is calling it beautifully unapologetically plastic. You know what? I think Apple should be apologizing for using plastic in this case because the plastic used is no different uh, than what is found on Samsung's devices, hyperglaze. It is super shiny, super slick, so that when you're holding it in your hand, you always feel like you're going to drop it, especially if you have sweaty mitts, greasy mitts, you've just eaten a burrito or whatever, it just feels slimy. And if you look closely in the light here on this pink model, you'll see that uh, fingerprints pick up pretty well. It's not really translating on camera here, but I can tell you that I can see fingerprints on this. Whereas on the iPhone 5S, you really don't get that except on the top and the bottom here, but this metal area just does not pick up fingerprints. So you're definitely going to want to have a case with the iPhone 5C. Now something Apple did right with this plastic phone is in hand feel. It feels a lot higher quality than your standard plastic phone. It feels a lot more high quality than the Galaxy S4 and the Galaxy S3. And the reason I say that is because, for example, if you take the 5C and you try to twist it a little bit, you try to make it flex, you cannot do that. It's incredibly rigid. Whereas the Galaxy S4, Galaxy S3, if you tried the same thing with, the, with those phones, don't try it, you might break it, uh, those phones will indeed flex. They feel thinner and cheaper and lighter. The 5C just feels more substantial, more high quality, even though the back is really slick and shiny. So besides that, looking around, we've got a uh, sort of reconfigured here volume rocker. If we bring in the 5S, uh, we can see that the, the buttons are a little bit taller and more clicky, listen. So a little bit more loud on the volume buttons. And besides that, everything else is, is, is similar except here on the bottom. And what we have here on the 5 and the 5S is the microphone here and the speaker here. Now on the 5C, it seems to be that the microphone's smaller. Well, actually, I think on the 5S and 5, the microphone takes up a small part of this drilled area. It's just a design choice for the 5S and the 5, uh, which they didn't go with on the 5C, probably to save a few bucks. That drilling slows down manufacturing, probably costs fractions of a penny, which can add up over millions and millions of units. Uh, so it's not as nice here on the bottom. We've got the lightning connector, black screws and silver screws, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now another thing that's cool about the 5C is that your choice of color will show through to the front on the perimeter of the phone, kind of like some other phones with color, like the Lumia 1020, uh, this yellow version. When you're holding the phone from the front, you can see a yellow border all the way around, which is nice, kind of remind you of the color that you carefully picked uh, for the next two years. So that's a nice design choice. Besides that, it's a little bit thicker uh, than the 5 and the 5S. Um, it's really difficult to tell here. Let's try to stack them again and maybe you can tell. Um, battery capacity on the 5C is up from the 5S. In terms of reference here, the iPhone 5, last year's model, had a 5.45 watt hour battery, 1440 milliamp hours. The 5C is a little bit bigger at 5.73 watt hours and 1507 milliamp hours. The 5S is bigger yet at 5.96 watt hours and 1570 milliamp hours. Really not that big of a difference. We're talking about a difference of about 100 milliamp hours uh, from the 5 to the 5S. So let's take that out of the picture and do some speed tests. And by the way, before we do speed tests, another difference between these two devices uh, are the cameras. We've got a bigger sensor here that can let in more light with a dual flash, amber and white, which can fire in many different combinations so that you don't get white blown out pictures. And so far, so good. We've been testing this at night, and it does look like that FET flash is effective at avoiding that. Uh, we've got the same exact camera from the iPhone 5 here which really isn't a bad thing. It takes great pictures, low light, and eh, not so great anymore compared to you know, the Lumia 1020 or the HTC One, uh, but definitely a great reliable camera on the 5C. Okay, and let's do some speed tests. We've got the A7 64-bit chip on the 5S, and we've got the A6 CPU here on the iPhone 5C, which has proven to be no slouch. The iPhone 5 to this day is still a very fast phone, one of the fastest out there. Uh, so the 5S just makes things a little bit faster in some cases, not many. So we're gonna start them up, see which gets to the lock screen first. One, two, three, go. 
Okay, 5S, a little bit faster out, out the gate with the uh, Apple logo. Okay, 5S is first. 5C, really not that far behind. Okay, and so let's slide to unlock. We're not activated on this phone, but we're running over Wi-Fi. Touch ID, using my thumb. Passcode required after restarting. And I've got the most secure pin in the whole entire world. There we go, now we're in. Okay, so let's boost the screen brightness on both of these devices. We're gonna go into settings here on both at the same time. They came up exactly at the same time. We're gonna go to wallpapers and brightness, and let's turn off auto brightness and jack the brightness up to 100%. These should have the same exact screen. Uh, if you watched our 5S versus 5 comparison video, we'll put a link up here. I said in the video that the screen brightness was exactly the same between the 5 and the 5S. I take that back, that's a mistake. The 5S is dimmer, and you can see it here too. Uh, I'm gonna bring these up more close to the screen. The 5S is just slightly dimmer than the 5C and the 5. This might be a bad unit or something. It's one of the first uh, off the line. It really doesn't impact much, but if we're being picky, the 5S is slightly dimmer for some reason, than the 5 and the 5C. Okay, so let's click around here. Let's open some system apps, starting with camera. One, two, three, go. About the same time there. And of course, one thing that you get in the iPhone 5S that you don't get in the 5C is slow-mo video, which is pretty cool. We're gonna talk about that more in the full review. Let's go into Safari. Okay, they're opening up different pages. Okay, let's go to Pocket Now. One, two, three, go. Um, that was much, much faster on the 5S. Zoom in and release. See which clears up faster. Faster on the 5S. Here's the real gold HTC One. And uh, about the same. Uh, okay, the 5S was a little bit faster there. And let's move around on the page, go to another story. We just went backwards. By the way, in iOS 7, a lot of people don't know this. You can go forwards and backwards by swiping on the screen like that. Super cool way to navigate in iOS 7. Um, so let's go to another story here. We'll zoom in and just do one more test. These phones are sliding all around, especially the 5C. 5C is C was faster in that situation. Just like we saw between the 5 and the 5S, there's not that much difference between these phones in terms of simple apps that are on the phone, like the web browser and opening up calendar and things like that. Really, apps have to be rewritten in 64-bit for the 5S to take advantage of the faster speed. So let's open calendar, one, two, three, go. Exactly the same time. Let's do double tap on the home button. Exactly the same time. So just like we saw between the 5S and the 5, there's not that much of a performance difference that you get with the A7 in day-to-day -day use. What you get is you get slow motion video, you get the promise of future apps that are optimized for 64-bit. Uh, of course, you get the fingerprint sensor, which might be a convenience for you if you use pin lock, and you get a better camera. And indeed, our tests are showing that the camera's a pretty big step up uh, between the 5S and the 5C or the 5 in terms of low light photography. We're gonna have a lot more in the full review coming up on that. So that was just a quick comparison between the 5C and the 5S. Our full reviews of the 5C, which Michael Fisher's going to do and the 5S, which I'm going to do, will be up shortly with plenty of information. So if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and drop a comment because it's a great way to stay in shape. Family Guy reference, bye.